Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to the live lecture of Structure Analysis 2. And today is 28th of uh, May 2020. Therefore, we have live lecture and let's get it started. And you see the cover page. It is week 13, lecture one. Structure two. And today we will see the approximate analysis of the structures under the gravity load. This is the topics that we are reviewing today. Therefore, we see approximate method for analysis of structures under vertical or gravity loads. And I give you one example for that. You know, there are different methods. We can categorize in general them in exact solution and approximate solution. In exact solution, you know the methods like slope deflection method. We saw that we, for beams, for frames, with translation, without translation, and a lot of examples. And the other one is one distribution method for beams, for frames, frames with tra joint translation, without joint trans uh, trans uh, formation, etc. Therefore, there are other methods like three method analysis, five method analysis, I told you seven, seven methods like very much them. And in the other books, you cannot find easily. And there are some iterative methods that you arrive to the uh, exact solution, like Gaspar Kani or Kani method. There are some other methods. And approximate methods can be for the vertical load and for the lateral loads. And for we saw for the horizontal or lateral loads. And now today we will see for gravity or vertical load. First, let's see what are loads. You know that in the design uh, courses you have seen that. We have two types of vertical loads, mainly they are dead loads and light loads. What's the difference between them? Dead loads are the loads which do not move during the building lifetime. They are fixed, like the for example, the weight, the weight of the structural members, external walls, structural members like beams, columns, slabs, and even to something that over slabs they are for finishing the use, they are fixed there. But live loads are the loads which move or may displace during the building lifetime such as the weight of the people, desk, chairs, I don't know, furniture, and even the internal walls or partitions. Why? Because uh, it may be designed and planned for the taste of someone, and then the owner changed, and he wants to change the system, the plan. Therefore, they change the internal uh, For example, is placing them or removing them, adding them, these are the light loads. And the lateral loads, mainly they are earthquakes and wind loads. There are some others like, for example, explosion and etc. Okay. When we are talking and uh, separating dead load, light load, etc., what is the aim? The target is we apply load factors for ultimate strength design, for LRFP, etc. 
Do you know we, there, are, there are different categories for design? Working stress design or WST method or it is called allowable stress design well, WST or AS, they are the same. The base of WST or AST method is on the elastic behavior and linear behavior of the material. They go just linear. And for safety factor, they are added some safety factor to the stresses. For example, instead of going to FY, we consider 055 FY for steel in reinforced concrete or steel 06 FY. And for the concrete, instead of prime C, they applied 0 0.45 times the time C. This is allowable stress. The base is allowable stress. For WST method, for AST method, allowable stress method, we use load factors equal 1 for dead load, live load, for everything. But then we use ultimate strength design and UST method for just CI, ACI, or we can strength method, we use load factors. The latest load factors, because they changed, is load factor for dead load is 1.1, for live load is 1.6. There is less safety factor for live load because it's not known, it's unknown for us anything. The combination, the location, the you know, the, everything is not very clear for us. But the code give us some values. Load factor for earthquake 1.76. 1.76 equals 1.6 and 1.1. It means 10% more than live load. For uh, wind load and etc. And the load combination. These are load cases. You will see load combinations as well. Now let's see <clears throat> the difference between dead load, live load that we have. And also, for design beam, the W distributed load that you apply. The intensity of distributed load W is different from the dead load and live load. How we calculate that? Let me show you. I showed you if I well, but now repeating. For example, If you consider a uh, dead load or live load is for one square meter, means one square, one by one. This area. So this is one as well. This is one meter as well, or you need. For, for this part, you say dead load or live load. Dead load. Or live load. They are load per square meter. One square meter. How about this part? But when we are talking the intensity, for example, on the frame or beam that is in row two, we use W. What is W? W is the load for one meter length of the beam. This is one meter in the length of the beam because the length is from here to here or continues. What is one meter of that? Therefore, the load for one meter, the load comes from half from the adjacent spans. 
or adjacent beams. If the spacing between this beam and this beam, the spacing is S1, half of the load goes to this beam. Half of the load. And if the spacing between beam located at row two and three is S2, half of this goes to beam at row two. Therefore, finally, for one meter length of the beam, you see the load is this portion that I make it in shaded by in red. Therefore, this is W. Therefore, the value of W is bigger than the value of dead load line load. Because if you consider the contribution of load for beam row two, it is this part. It cost is comes to half from span one and half from span two. Therefore, W equals this width times dead load line load. Because you saw that the dead load live load, just this portion was dead load live load. Just one square meter, not more. But W was for one meter length in the length of the what is the difference? In next slide, we see the equation for W. First, when we see intensity load, when we have W ST method, working stress design method, we use just W. But when we use UST method, which is ultimate strength design, use W, U, U for ultimate. Both of them, W and W, U, has the unit of kilogram force per square meter, or newton per square millimeter, or newton per square meter, or you say, for example, pound per square inches, in square feet, etc. Okay, if you wanted to write the formula that W, which is related to, I mean, that load factor was one. So load factors are one. We consider total dead load and live load and times the width of the load that comes to the beam that we are studying. Therefore, this is multiplied into dead load live load. When we use the UST method, ultimate strength design method, we have load factors. 1.1 and 1.6 for dead load line. We use load factor or ultimate intensity of load. Therefore, we multiply all these factor loads to the spacing related to the load on our beam. Therefore, please don't mix the load line load and W and WU.
Now let's see one example for this case. Suppose we want to design a reinforced concrete building by using a strength design. A strength design is ultimate strength design. Ultimate strength design is you estimate it. Dead load is given 750 kg force per square meter and live load is given 250 kg force per square meter. Consider the spacing between 6 meters. Therefore, S1 and S2, both of them are 6 meters. Let me, someone joining us. Yes. Yeah. More students. They are joining us. Okay. Let's go to the uh, lecture. One by one, they are adding. Okay. I hope they can automatically be added. Yes. The spacing given is one is two six meters dead load and live load, and we apply the formula that we had, and we find the value of the dead load. Apply the value of dead load and live load, and we find WU, which is the intensity of load for ultimate strength design. We use the load factors, we use the spacing related to the beam, and we form the intensity. Be careful, this is kilogram per meter, but dead load was kilogram force per square meter. The difference is that. Let's see next slide. In next slide, I am showing you, and this is the base for approximate analysis method that we use for analysis the frames under the gravity load. Imagine that if we have one statically determinate beam, like a simple beam like this, a simple beam, under the load of W, uniform distributed load with a length of L. You know that we have simple supports at both sides. This is simple support. It's very famous. For this case, you know that a max at the middle is W L square over eight. And the form of the bending moment diagram is like uh, for example, parabolic curve. And for this case, the shear diagram is linear. And the shear at supports, this is total load over two. Half of total load comes here and half in the other side. Therefore, we consider as the load that supports. Therefore, this is base for us. This is the base that we use in design of the analysis of the structures applying approximate method. Now, how? How this is the base? Here, imagine that we have, it's uh, shown badly, we have a fixed support beam at, fixed at the supports. These are fixed support. If we have fixed support here, this has one curve like this. And you see that there is one zero moment here. One zero moment here. This is inflection point, which m equals zero.
and here m equals 0. Okay, what does it mean? It means that if we isolate and separate this portion, this acts as a symbol for P. Okay, if total length is L, but this length is lowercase l or a small l, we can write that for this one we have one simply support beam w times l square. No, 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 no. This is a uh, not that one, this is the real one. This is the real one, you know that when you have fixed support, I told you we have fixed here. Fixed support, at the support, the mo negative moment is W L square over 12. At the middle, positive moment, is w L square over 28. <clears throat> this is it. But when we say, okay, the curve is like this, and we have here, oh, the moment is zero. Moment is zero is the inflection point is inch. Here I can say that this is a the structure that this moment, which is maximum for that, if I consider the length of this part as small l or low case l, <coughs> this moment is W or here W U times L small over eight. Therefore, for this one, just for this, and L is the small L, the distance between the two inflection points. This point and this point. This is the base, and then separate. Okay, if we cut this one, we put reaction on this part. We have one cantilever here and one cantilever here, and we design that. This is the basis. Now let's go and see more. You see that when we have fixed or hinge, the shear force and support are the same. In both cases, this is WL over 2. Okay, when we have a real case in the, in the Fixity is something between zero and hundred percent, of course. And you know that we are having. We have fixed support. And this is the inflection point. The location of inflection point from the support is a value of 
zero twenty one times L when the L is the length of the pin. But in the end, you see the beams situation. In a frame, there are some rotation in the joints. There are some rotation between columns and beams. Actually, with some experience and some statistics, they have seen that instead of 021L, we have something about 0,1L, 10% of length here, with zero moment and the support. So it means that the moment is like this. And this distance is 10% of length. Because we don't have big, we don't have this one. We don't have zero this one. We have this case. Therefore, we consider zero point. Therefore, the base of approximate analysis is. 0, 1, L, the local flexion point from the supports. Therefore, for the actual cases, as I mentioned, in normal buildings, uh, partial fixity, not total fixity, semi-rigid connections, not rigid connection, not hinge connection. The point of inflection where M is zero may be assumed to lie somewhere between the two cases of 0 0.21 and 0 L. 0 L is for simply support beam, 0 0.21 L is for fixed support beam from the end of the beam. If they are assumed to be located at one-tenth of the span, it means 0, 1, L, 0, 1, L, one-tenth of a slab, span length, 0, 1, and 0, 1. Therefore, you see that uh, is hinge here, why? Because M0 and hinge here, we have M0. This length from here to here for the simply support beam is 0, 08. Times L. Okay, we separate this beam And calculate that. When we have that one, we have a max for that. So W we have L is a small L we have. Over eight we can put a moment. We can calculate shear. We can calculate for this one. And then as I mentioned, we apply the reaction here on the other part. And we apply load over that part as well. And we can calculate the fixed end moment here or end moment here and reaction here. And element by element, we design beam the frame. So this is the base. As I mentioned, 
we see this one this is the final bending moment diagram sketched for a case you see that the uh, moment on the columns are linear on the beams they have one hyperbolic form therefore if we wanted to apply the approximate method we should put inflection points at the points that moment is zero and we design this beam as a simple beam this beam and a sketch in a greater x scale you will see that this was the moment diagram this is the location of inflection point inflection point because m equals 0 1 0 l 0 1 l and between them the length of we can show this one like a simply support for this small span the length of this one is L small or lowercase L and it is 0 0.8 L and L capital was total length you know total length from here to here it was L okay we designed this simple beam because you know that a small L as I you see this total S minus two parts from two sides so it is zero L so we can say L small equals zero L this is the basis for every span we do for here for here and we separate them and what is the advantage advantage is we transform and we convert it one statically indeterminate structure to a statically determinate structure therefore you can separate them and calculate there is no unknown that everything is clear and everything is now now let's see one example please find below the sketch of a typical plan floor of a building and frame row C of that therefore this one you see this is a plan of the typical plan of a floor row A rows A B C D E we wanted to see the frame situated at row C Therefore, you know half of load from that span and half of load from this span. They are belong to the frame C at row C. Therefore, consider the typical plan and frame, row C, of a building. This building is under the dead load and lie equal to 850 kilogram force per square meter. And also, for lie 50 kilogram force per square meter. That is distributed the floor. Facing frames to adjacent beams is six meters for both sides. From left and right, from the both sides. 
Assume that the columns have the same stiffness. You know, the effect of its columns on the distribution is important in some more uh, real, realistic formulations. But here they are the same. Determine the bending moments in beams and axial force and bending moments in columns for row C by using the method of structural analysis and WSD method. Okay, we saw the plan, <clears throat> the spacing six meter between beams. And now this is a sketch of the frame C that shows the height. Height is uh, three meters. The span length, the one is five, the other six, and last one again five. It's a symmetrical structure. We have symmetry here. And as stiffness says, between columns, they are equal. Therefore, because we're using this uh, working stress design, we use the dead loads equal one. You remember that for finding the intensity of load W, we use the summation of dead load and live load to the spacing that is close to the uh, F frame from left side and right side half and half applying and live load we find the intensity of load new i mentioned again dead load is per square meter live load same but w is per meter because it shows the load per meter should not mix the units and apply very properly the units. Again, in this figure, we consider if you say in frame, you see that two type of beams there in the first span they have the length of five meters and the other one in the other side again has five meters therefore we call this one type one this is beams type one and the middle span has six meter we call these beams type two therefore you know that the moments they share everything from this time from the other two for type one the span length is five meter for Beam type two, it is a span length is six meters. Therefore, here we say the beams between row and one and three and four that we call beam type one. This is for that. In a beam type one, L is five meters total length. And you know that a small L for the simply support beam that is here. This is simply support beam. Has a length of Four meters, zero eight times that. 
And you know that we separated between the inflation rate, where the moment was zero, and the shape of moment was like this. And from here to here to the support, to which to the support or for from inflation support, it is one zero L and the other side the same. One zero L. Therefore it's clear. One zero L zero eight zero one L zero eight L and also zero one L. And we separate this simply support, we find moment at the middle span, shears at support, and we apply the reaction of that beam on the other part. And we design this one as one cantilever beam. under a load that is reaction of the and its own distributed load over that. Same for the other side. We have two cantilever and one simply supporting. And we solve that. Now let's see what the value. Okay, simply support very clearly. This is L and M marks at the middle. And if you calculate M max equals W, this is L small, it's written by a student wrong. Yeah, this is the note of a student in class. This is W small square over eight. And the reaction here we call R1. And the reaction here we can call R2. And R1 is half of the load. If we say total load, total load value equals W times L equals W times L. This is R1 is actually F1 over two, half of the load comes here. And R2 is again the same has the same value is our F1 over two. And then as I mentioned, we apply this reaction on the other cantilever and we calculate the cantilever. If we calculate that, you see that totally shear or reaction at support as the Big support is W L capital L over two. The other side the same, and M max at the middle is W times zero eight times L, and this is the summary that we need to apply to the all the beams. The same for shear, I told you. Shear is half load, half load. And shear for fixed support or hinge support, they are the same. You can calculate the shear at support directly from the shear at the middle span. And marks, that's enough for us. We don't want anything else.
because the moment that support will calculate by is this can action here easily is calculated. Therefore, you see this in this slide uh, calculations. F1, which was shows the total load, it was WL, total load on the simple support beam at the middle, S1, small one. We have found the value of F1, and L, a small one, equals 0, 8 times L, which is 4 meters. You find the reactions at the ends of the two ends of the simple support. R1, R2 is total load over 2. A mat at the, at the middle of the span, you consider L small, which was 4 meters. You calculate that. This is a max positive. And continue F2. This is the reaction. Of the simple support beam, it was W times 01L. This was the load of that. The load of that cantilever. If you consider this is the cantilever, and the length of that is 01L. There is one load here, we don't talk about this load. We talk about the value of this load first. You can this easily follow. I because I gave for architecture student, I saw that F2, for example, is the summation of load that we put here, equivalent of that. No need. Easily you can calculate this moment for this reaction. This load, that's done. Therefore, finally, you calculate M negative at support, which is at the end of cantilever beam. Therefore, M positive, it was something about 14,400 kilogram force per times meter. And then MB, 8,000. 100 kilogram force meter. We calculate the shear force at the final support, at the joint in the frame. W L over 2. When you have frame, This is, for example, shear between this point and this point. Then not on the simple support beam, on the real beam between two joints. And we check RB should be the summation of reaction from the simple support plus the load of the distributed load on the cantilever. That's okay. This is small checking that you can. And you know that shear at support equals reaction at the support. That is maximum shear and it's 18,800. Now we see for beam type 2 because the length was different. The only difference was length. The length is six meter. We repeat the cases. We find a max at the middle span. We find 
in max at support and we find also the uh, shear forces in next slide here shear forces are prime b or R, rb minus which is maximum support and shear and reaction they are the same and has a value of 21,600 kilogram force because that's force and now let's see uh, what is the nature of axial force in columns actually in any joint The reaction of beam comes there. Therefore, the reaction of beam is axial load at the column. And at internal columns, we have two reactions, one from left and one from right. The summation of these two goes in this column. If you cut from here, the reaction, which is axial load, Equals summation of these two. This is another internal. Therefore, for internal, we have two loads, two reactions. For external, just one. Same for the other part. Okay, we have sketched that for the top floor, the value is given as the reaction of the beam in the other floor in the first floor from the bottom this is the value this is for internal one and for internal this is for internal columns For external columns, no, sorry, this was external. This was external, and this is internal. This is for internal. For internal column, we have the same. For top floor and bottom floor, the summation of two reaction of two beams from two sides. You remember one comes from this side and one from the other side. The summation goes inside of this. For we start from top. If you cut here, the reaction axial load was that. But when you go to the first floor, you should cut from here and see what is the reaction and what is axial load. In this time, you have one reaction of beam here, one reaction of beam here. And also in the other floor, we have one reaction here and one reaction of here now if we write summation of f y equals zero this reaction axial force in the first uh, story column first floor column this is the summation of four items summation of these two plus to the others therefore because of that we have two times y because in spans they are similar Finally, this is double of the other one. Now, in this slide, we have axial loads for all columns in frame C.
you will see that the internal columns has the axial load two times of external columns. Now let's see the shear force. What is the, how we calculate the shear force? You remember that for one beam type one, we had the reaction or shear at support. And for the other part, we calculated they were equal and we sketched this. For the middle one, the length was different. Therefore, we have different value for external again, like the other part. And because the intensity of load doesn't change, for the other floor, we have the same as top floor shares. They are similar. But don't forget, for spans, they are different because the length are different. One is five meters, has a five meter length, the other, six meter length. Is, is there any student join now? Yes. Faisal. Therefore, let's continue. Okay, now we arrive to the point. You remember we calculated M negative for the beams. If this is the beam, we calculated M negative at supports. If we separate the joint, this is the joint. This is joint and this is member. The moment at the end of beam is opposite and equal the moment at the end of joint. These are opposite but the same value. So if this is 8,100 kilogram force meter, this has the same value. For the other beam, we apply this value one by one. We have for all beams now. We have this one. We have this one for the beams we have. For the beams, they are reactions of uh, end moment of the beams. We calculate it, MB. The difference for two different span was different only because of their the span length, one was five, the other was six. Otherwise, they are similar. Therefore, now we have the M negative at support of the beams. In next step, we calculate M at columns. Let's see how. Before going to that, these are the values that we had from the reaction or shear at the end of beams. MB negative for beam type one, MB prime negative at the ends of the beam type two. And now M at point, for example, let's see. When we say M is moment, C moment at columns and near end E, bar end D. MC, M for column. Near end E, bar end D. Let's see what is that. Which one is that? Yes, if we consider the joint D and E, MCED is this one. 
this moment or this moment at the end of the joint or end of the member. This is the member and this is the joint. They are equal. Then when we are talking about this value, first we start from the corner. From the corner is clear for this joint there are one M from beam and other M from column. They are opposite and equal. Therefore, the value is this one, but the direction opposite of that. Therefore, you see that M, C, E, D, it is moment on the top of column at the top floor, external column. This is why. And M, D, E, the bottom of that column, equals half of that moment transferred to bottom. If we have one column, if we have one moment here, and if it has one value, this one, half of that goes to the other side. Here we have half of that. The carryover factor is 1 over 2. You remember from moment distribution method. Therefore, if this is A, this is A over 2. Therefore, we had M, C, D at the top of column, at the bottom of column, we found M at column, near end D, far end E. When it was D, it was E here, and D was here. There is half of that, the value we have. Let's talk about the why it is one over two, what is what happened, etc. For columns, as you see, if one column is under the moment, the default shape of column has a double curvature hole. When you have double curvature, it means moment is clockwise here, the other one is counterclockwise here. No, that's clockwise as well, sorry. This is clockwise, this is clockwise as well. Both of them the same value. You have double lecture, uh, curvature, therefore half of that comes to the other side. Transfer, transferring factors for, for carryover factor of, from for top of column to the uh, bottom of that is over one over two. It means that the moment at the bottom of the column is half of the moment at top of column, it's clear. Then we apply this one as one principle to analyze the structure. Okay, in general, if they don't have enough stiffness, in the same stiffness, identical stiffness, the stiffness is EI over L, and E is represents the young young modul, modulus and I represents the moment of inertia. L represents the column's length. Therefore you know that the solution of moment between columns, for example imagine that we have one uh, joint here, the stiffness of Top column and bottom column, they are not the same. Therefore, distribution of moment 
between them is proportional to their uh, stiffness. The same for the others. Here, fortunately, we have the same stiffness. K1 and K2, they are the same. And therefore, the factor is 1 over 2 as well. Therefore, we consider for the other joint, M, C, M at column, at C, B, B, C, A, B, etc., and complete the diagram. And we continue. One thing that is important as well, the summation moment at any joint should be zero. At the, you saw that at top level, at the corner, external column, moment, you had one moment from beam, one moment from the column, they were equal. If you go down, Yes, here, one moment from M equals one moment to the column. Summation of M equals zero at any joint, you should write. Or you can say summation of M at beams beams equals summation of M at columns. Over here we have three. Two from beam and it equals to the column. Here we have four. Two from beam. One transferred from top column. Half of them come here. Therefore, we can calculate the fourth one. Let me show again here for this joint. For this joint, we have four elements. One from end of beam, one from end of beam. We had this value. And when we calculated this one, or for the, forget that one. For joint J, when we have from moment from the end of beam, the other one we have from end of beam, we calculate end of column at joint J. Half of that goes to the I. They were at I, we have at point I, we have one from one beam, second one from the other beam, and one from moment from column transferred half of that half of the moment at point J to that. Over here we have three known from the summation of moment, we can find the fourth one. One by one we find the moments at the end of beams, at the end of columns, at exterior, interior, and finalize and sketch the diagram. Here is showing the moment at the ends of the column, the beams, MB minus and B prime minus for two different types of beams, type one and type two, with different span lengths. One has five meter span length, the other six meters span length. Therefore, we calculate it for, again, columns at E, D, D, E, etc. We 
we can call it, we saw this one, we, come, we can, I came back. We saw this slide as well. Uh, we saw this one as well. Now, we go to the other um, joints, J. And we go to I, joint I. We go to G and calculate all of them. Now, let's see what was the uh, convention for sketching the diagram. You remember in a slope deflection or in moment distribution, when you had positive moment, it, it means that it was clockwise positive. But here, for sketching the diagram, I told you we use the happy man rule. It is a man. Which is smiling. His smile is positive, therefore, this moment that make him smiling and this moment that make him smiling or her, it's positive. It means that at the left end of the beam, Positive is clockwise. But at the right side, and right end, positive is counterclockwise. Therefore, we have write this convention for the sign of moments in the diagrams. This is for beam. Why we can define that this is the under beam? But what about columns? Columns, you cannot say like that. But when you have a column, you can define that, that okay, for me, when you say under beam and this is under tension, and top of that is under compression, it means under beam is clear. What about the columns? It's left side or right side? You may consider under, beam for column or under column is, doesn't make sense but you can say under beam for column is this one and for the other side don't consider at the right side consider symmetrically like this and now you can sketch the diagram if you have diagram like this you can say this is like this Positive, negative, and define that. Therefore, by applying those values, the moments, we find moments for at the ends of the columns at external columns, and internal also similar to that you can find, internal and external, and you can sketch the diagram. If we sketch the diagram, this is the diagram. Therefore, this diagram is found for considering the uh, approximate analysis for rigid frames under the gravity load. The gravity load was from top to bottom. It was downward, and it was due to dead load and live load, mainly. It, it is, we consider the distributed load. It may be concent, uh, concentrated load as well. Doesn't matter, you can calculate that. But don't forget, if there is, you should find the location of the, the uh, point. Therefore, you see that for the beams, 
this value of moment exactly is moment at the cantilever that you have. Do you remember we calculated cantilever? We calculated this cantilever moment and for beam type one, we called that M negative B and it was on there let me show with another color it was under this load this was the reaction of the simply support beam and its load on it is so you found this moment by summation of m equals zero we find easily that summation of moment at this point zero it's very clear if this is cantilever and this is, you remember it was 0.1 L. So 0 0.0 L, the length was five meter, this was 0 0.5. And you write MB negative minus equals. This reaction was R1, you remember. It is R1 times its lever R, which was here 0, 1. L <coughs> plus we have intensity of load here W for the cantilever on the cantilever we can say <coughs> W L square which L was zero one times L S square over two this is moment at the end of cantilever due to distributed load and the length was zero then we can check from here. If you have the dimension W, you can check. This is correct or not? Because sometimes you do some operation and you lo lose your path. You, you lose your way. You don't know what happened and then one error change everything. Everything should be checked and controlled at the end. End control is like that. You can check this moment. In the other side, it has the same value. And you know that because the load was symmetry, this moment, this moment, at the end of the beam type one, they are, they have the same value. And what about this M positive? Let's check this one. As a control, we wanted to check M positive. You remember that we say that we have one hinge here, one hinge here. We consider this one as simply support beam. And we put load over that, and we said that length of that is zero eight L. Therefore, this moment should 
P, let me write a max positive. equals W times L, which L in L is small, lowercase. What was the length of that? Simple beam, 0, 8 L. A square over 8. If you apply the value of W and L, you will find this value. For us, L capital is from here to here, which was 5 meters. This is L capital, but this is L small, which belongs to the simple support beam. Now you see that we can verify the value found for the maximum moment. Therefore, what are the uh, other checks? We calculated this one at the end of beam. At the end of column should have the same value. These are equal because just two moments and summation of M0, they are equal. What is the other control? If you consider the column, external column here at external column, top floor, the value of top of column should be double of the value of bottom of that. Why? Because we have one carryover factor 1 over 2 for carrying the moment from top to bottom or from near end to the far end of one column. Therefore, yes, it's okay. This is half of that. This is half of that. This is two times of that. That's okay. What else? Let's see. What or what? Which more control? These are the same. This was half of that. In the other part, you see the same. These are the same. And this is half of this one. And be careful because the length of the uh, beams were different. Here they don't arrive to one point. If this is the end of moment for this span, for the other one, we have another point. It's not here. The sketch by a student is not right. Comes upper. Why upper? Because the length is in this span is greater than the other one. The moment should be bigger. This is bigger than this one. Therefore, this is higher. You have two points here. Be careful. One for beam type 2 and the other for beam type 1. They are not at the same place. Here as well. Yeah, we have one here. And for the inside, I start from here. And you know, always half of that goes to the other side. Half of this moment, carry over to the other one. Uh -uh. In the other side, we sketch symmetrically. Just because of the convention. Why this is 
in the left side, but this is at the right side. Because we defined a convention. What was the convention? Convention, you remember, we said if we have a frame, portal frame, We considered under beam here and shown by dash line. What about columns? For column, we defined under beam inside. For the other column, under beam inside as well. Kind of symmetry manner. Because of that, we have symmetry between this one and this one. This is the uh, question of our decision for selection of the um, positive and negative moment. When we had beam, we say here is, for example, tension, and here we had compression. And tension and compression give us the curvature and positive negative moment. And we considered positive when we have curvature downward. This is for us positive moment. When the deformed shape of the beam also has something like that. And moment here was clockwise, the other one counted clockwise, but both of them are positive. This is our convention. Okay, if we see the deformed shape, deformed shape of the, for example, mm, one portal frame should be like this deformed shape. Okay, what is the importance of positive or negative convention? In a steel structure, doesn't has no meaning. No, it's not important. It's not significant. Why? Because tension in co uh, compression and the tension, the steel has the same strength. If why for tension and compression they are the same, but in concrete, the compression is good enough, but tension. A strength of concrete is very weak. We should know where is tension and we cover that by putting reinforcement. Therefore, here you know that if there is tension or cracks in beam, it is at the bottom of the beam. But here, you have negative one, it's at the top of that. Here, the cracks are at top. Similarly, when you see the deformed shape, you see in the columns, here you have crack outside and outside. And here you see crack you have he here. Here you have crack here. What are the use of that? Imagine that you have one structure or one frame, concrete frame like this. And you wanted to find where is the location for putting the reinforcement. It's clear here. For beam, you should put here the 
bottom of beam at support because you have negative moment you put here and here why the reinforcement should be here and here is clear what about columns we don't know negative positive where we should put we should see the deformed shape if it's the deformed shape here we have crack we should put here outside over here we continue put here and symmetrically okay what about the bottom of that one you see that here you have crack therefore here you put reinforcement or shear connection like this or shear reinforcement like this and then therefore what is the positive negative or beam is clear top and bottom or column is not clear we can consider one convention and convention is better to be adopted to the default shape of the structure default shape us the curvatures. The curvatures shows us the location of cracks. The location of cracks shows uh, the location of cracks show us where we should put reinforcement, steel bars. This is the aim of the putting positive, negative like that. Therefore, when you put positive, negative, you know where you should put the reinforcement. I repeat again, it is not important for, for a steel because the strength of a steel in compression and tension, they are the same. Fy in tension and compression, they are the same, yielding, stress, and strength. But for concrete, the compression strength and tension strength are different. The tension strength is something about one tenth of the compression strength. Therefore, should be very careful and we should use the steel bars where the location that we have potential cracks. Therefore, we should know the curvature sides, the positive, negative, the conventions, everything. Pay attention. Therefore, the time's up and let's see please don't forget you have limited time for homeworks two sets of homework if you have done no need for repeating that if not complete that for the student who completed the homework set one that's okay go to set two and next week is Final exam. Be careful and study well. Thank you very much. I cut the recording, but I continue in the use them and in the use them model or in the Google Meet for answering your potential questions, possible questions. Thank you very much. Therefore, we finish this part. Now I am working on Google Meet. Okay.